Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. Okay, so you all know and love Molly Bernard from Younger, which is in its seventh and sadly final season on Paramount Plus, but on May 21st, she's got a brand new film called Milk Water, which is so great. It's about a young girl kind of finding her way in life and then she decides to be a surrogate for a gay man in his 50s. It's such a great story. Molly, how are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad you watched the film. It's like so near and dear to my heart. I'm, I'm yes. so excited for the world to see it. Yeah, speaking of the world, see it May 21st, video on demand. Um, the film is so sweet. And I was just thinking, I really love that we're getting these films finally telling stories about different ways of family, different ways of having children. For, for you, obviously you star as Milo. What was it about this story that you wanted to be a part of? Oh, that's such a good question. I mean, I read the script and I remember thinking I've never seen a story like this told. Um, this community of friends kind of are each other's parents. They are each other's chosen family. And to, to you know, and that would be interesting in and of itself, but to top it off, you know, the film actually chronicles this character I play, Milo, who is like a lost millennial who um, befriends this older gay man at a drag bar and or who runs his own drag bar. And basically within the same day, she decides to be his surrogate. So it it really also covers the vulnerability and how difficult it is to start queer families. And I just felt like that story, the the kind of series of stories in the film that are told need to be told because it the, the film has such empathy and it is it's just uh, this character that i play is not easy to play it's just you don't really like her and then suddenly somewhere in the film you fall in love with her and that's like the script did that to me and i was like i want to do that so it's they the, you know her community of friends love her but they're also like oh god you know we all have one of these friends that we're like babe what are you doing <laughs> i know you do such a good job because i think that is the, that's gotta be the trick. Cause I am not an actor, but to play someone where you're like, wait, I love them, wait, they're crazy. I don't like them, but I love them again. Like, you know, it's, and that's exactly how I felt. Oh my gosh, there were some moments where I'm like, don't do it. It's like cringy, you know, like. Oh, cringe. And <laughs> and yet you, I, I think I, I understood why she was behaving like that, even yeah. though the behavior is like, stop while you're ahead, baby, don't do that. And then she just still goes for it. And I feel like that I did, I did that shit for a lot of that stuff for a lot of my That's 20s. I, I, no, I, I do too. It reminds me, I mean, I didn't, you know, plan to have a child, but I remember it made, I identify with it. Cause I know it's like, when you meet someone, you find something good, you're like, I'm all in, I want to do this. Let's do here. Let's make plans for next Saturday. Like, you know, and I get that that's how Milo is, you know? Totally. She's, yeah. that's kind of why I said, like, we either all were her in, 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 you know, her elusive ways, we can resonate with that behavior, or we have someone in our life who is a little bit unhinged like that. And I think that's ultimately why it's a, it's a good vehicle for like, having compassion for the people in your life who don't have all of their shit together. No, absolutely. Did you see the film Together Together by any chance? I have not seen it yet, but Nicole Beckwith is a dear friend of mine and I, I haven't watched it. It's so great. It's a very different film, but I, but it's also the the commonality, I guess, would be that, that you know, it's a, a woman who is being a surrogate for a gay man. But like, you know, I just think that the more films like this are made that show a different side of just, you know, the boy and the girl getting married, then they have the baby. You know what I mean? It's so great. It's like, I feel like I can have a child that if I want to have a kid at 50, you know, I can do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like the, the, from what I understand about Together Together and our film is that the surrogate and the father are kind of wading this territory of are they friends? Is it a legal contract? Like the nuance of that, th that's why so many people just, you know, when you hire a surrogate, you really don't know what you're going to get. And so it's, mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend who actually is a surrogate and has been a surrogate and she loves it. And like that, but I don't think she has close relationships with those families. And yeah. so it, it is, it's like, 
you have to be a certain kind of person. Weirdly, Milo is not that person, which is why I think this movie is so exciting because it's like, I think many times when you're watching the film, I, as the viewer, even though I like was in it and read it and understand that film, sometimes I'm like, is she going to follow, like what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. And she, can she actually do it? Right. It's and taller. I think, it, yeah, no, and I know, and like without giving away the ending, I was like, I, you know, I'm like, what happens next? I'm like, I wanna see the story when, when like cut to five years from now, you know what I mean? Like, cause there is a version that could still be pulled, but the I agree. Very yeah. elegant ending. Right? Yeah, I loved that. Um, but we won't spoil it because you all have to check it out May 21st, video on demand. Uh, but thinking about your castmates, obviously getting to work with so many great people like Robin De Jesus, so great, love. <laughs> Literally, I turn into a puddle. Anything, anything for Robin. We just like friend fell in love pretty hard. He is a unicorn and the specialist treat on the planet. Uh, no, I completely agree. I got to talk to him for, um, for was it Boys in the Band? Yeah, I think, yeah, that yeah. must be what it was, but he's so yeah. great. Um, so, you know, thinking about you with, you know, being, you know, relationship, how, how did this movie, which, you know, depicts the road to becoming a family for one gay man in his 50s, did, has it changed, did it change or affect your thoughts on maybe if you want to have children or start a family or, or not? Totally. I mean, I think for us, my partner, Hannah, and I do want to have children and I am planning on carrying um, also because I've seen Hillary do it. And like, I, I do think actually that it's uh, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, but I think what Milkwater has kind of helped Hannah and I discuss as a, you know, a queer, as two queer women starting a family once we get married, because we're still a little normie. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> like, we're thinking, shoot, do we, maybe we should actually use a sperm bank with like a, a donor that's not known, right? Mm -hmm. And like, just because we were thinking about asking some of our friends. So, but that might be extremely complicated. And I do think the film brings up like, whoa, it's, it's really, it's mind boggling, right? Starting a queer family or for folks who, you know, are in straight relationships and can't conceive, like mm -hmm. it is the desire to parent is so overwhelming. And if you, you know, you know, if you want to do it and you know, if you don't, right. And so it's like that desire, I think can lead people to make maybe impulsive decisions, which is exactly what this film is about. Yeah. And like, right. But there are, and the film also co covers those consequences. And like, I feel like that kind of scared Hannah and I, and we were like, oh no, maybe we should just do like sperm bank, legal, 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 get it all like covered. Yeah. It's not a bad idea to be, you know, to take precautions. I know because it's like, again, not spoiling too much, but with, with uh, Milo's friends, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, are they gonna come back after that experience? Like after she did that, like, you know, but then, you know, there, I don't want to reveal too much, but yes, yeah, so there is some happy resolve. So that's good. So I was happy. There's she some juicy, yeah. juicy kind of existential friend drama, right? Yes. How we behave. Uh, the, I mean, I have made so many poor emotional choices, like directed at my friends when I am in the heat of either hormones or like rage, whatever, have whatever form it's deciding to take. So, I agree. I feel like I maybe finally only figured that out. Like I'm in my mid thirties now. I might, maybe that means I'm growing up. I don't know, but like, <laughs> you know, the bad behavior is getting less with my friends. It's like a relief, Kali. I wish that I had had someone in my life, in my like yucky, yucky twenties being like, Hey, this actually, it's not just that it gets better. It's that, you do you will grow up a little bit and you'll grow out of this insane behavior yeah it will, and it gets like less the extremis is less the like peril of like make your own movie and you're gonna win an oscar in your own movie about how dramatic and awful everything is right like it all just calms down it's so right. nice it is so nice so i'm thinking you know this is you know coming out starting available on may 21st just in time for pride month and also What's going to be continuing for Pride Month is I'm so sad. I'm happy and sad. I'd like just like the Casey Musgrave song because Younger is literally one of my favorite things ever. And it is, I get it, Seven Seasons is 
a great run for any show, but this is the last season. We're right in the middle of it. There'll be new episodes available on Paramount Plus every Thursday. Um, Lauren, your character, what a way to go out. I mean, kind of just taking charge, wearing all the statement necklaces. Um, theming still, which I love. Um, you know, just before we get into how it's going to wrap up, because I know you're going to tell me everything, right? Um, how did this character and this journey of Lauren, who's pansexual, one of, I think, the few characters on TV who is identifies as pansexual, how did that affect your journey to really, you know, accepting yourself as a queer woman and being more open? And, you know, obviously you just mentioned Hannah, finding love with Hannah, which is so great. How did that all affect your personal story? What a question. Um, <laughs> I mean, Younger has um, been a seven year chapter of my life. And I actually think Lauren was the first pansexual character on television. And yet that was never tokenized. That right. was never, you know, that was always kind of weirdly the least interesting thing about her. There were so many other more dynamic characteristics rather than about her than, you know, rather than who she sleeps with. And I and her parents accepted her and Lauren is a celebrated character and she's also a queer character on television who um, is not struggling in her queerness and weirdly you know this feels weird to say but I do think that kind of positive representation is important too because it's aspirational it you know we need, yes right and like we, we do need the queer stories of like the struggle of coming out right you know and we need the examples of like stories of queer of parents of queer folks that are like struggling and then they come to Jesus and they figure it out and they love their kid. Like we need all of that. But I also think in that spectrum, you really do need a set of parents like Lauren. I don't think it's a, it's an accident that the only parents represented on our show are Lauren's parents because she's the young queer person and they're just like, they celebrate her. They're in love with her. They let, they love her in all of her harness. And I think being surrounded in that like bloodstream for seven years, by the time I met Hannah, we were five seasons in, and I just was like, oh, that's my person. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, as a pansexual, has helped me realize, or has helped kind of, I guess, materialize my acceptance of, some some weeks I say I'm bisexual, some weeks I'm queer, I don't know. Um, I'm something, I know that I'm, you know, have. I'll sleep with anything. I identify more with Lauren, actually. <laughs> that's the headline, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. that's, there's the headline. She'll sleep, my life will sleep with anything. Um, so I I love people and I love love and like, sorry, I love making love. So like fun. I just feel like maybe, maybe I am pansexual. Who the heck knows? I'm definitely, Lauren has made it okay to be whatever I am. And playing her really gave me no choice. So that's my spiel. <laughs> I love that. And you know, going back to what you said about uh, this, you know, very, yeah, like Lauren knows who she is. She's not struggling. It's not like, oh, should I come out? Oh, I can't tell my parents. Because like you said, that is important to show. But more and more, glad what we are craving, really pushing the industry to show is just queer people, normal queer people, serve, uh, you know, being successful and no longer the, the, you know, the story of. So, I mean, Lauren, I think is so aspirational and like she just, you know, says, this is who I am. I'm going to take over the world one statement necklace at a time now. Oh. <laughs> Yes. You know, I also think, if I may, something that I'm really proud of uh, uh, in terms of my career are is that, you know, these two projects that are active right now, Milkwater and Younger, yeah. I, I'm so lucky that my politics and my ethics match. It doesn't always happen with actors or artists, mm -hmm. but it is right now matching the work that I'm doing because I agree with you. I am very passionate that queer representation needs to be normalized. We just need to see people and maybe they sleep with, you know, whoever they sleep with, but whatever, they're living their lives. And I think it's really interesting, like in Milkwater, that um, Milo's normal friends, her normalist friends are her gayest friends. Mm -hmm. And that like her most stable people in her life are the queer people. And she's like the, the, the straight girl, like flailing. And I feel like Lauren kind of is that for her friends in, you know, on Younger as well. Like Lauren is the one who is queer and yet always has the solutions and is always problem solving and like 
I just think there's something very interesting in there about the 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 anti story about the suffering homosexual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, completely. And you know, I know you mentioned uh, Hillary, uh, obviously super close with her, but thinking about with someone like Nico Tortorella, also part of the community, they are so they have also had such a strong journey during the course of Younger as well. Have you found yourself kind of bonding with Nico and all that they are doing? Because they're so passionate about the movement and representation. Oh yeah, Nico and I have had many and many different levels of chats and intensity about, I mean, for seven years, we've been in an ongoing dialogue. Yeah. And Nico has undergone a complete transformation and of, of spirit, of soul, of lifestyle, of, of themselves. And I feel like we really identify with each other. Nico is always the one person on set this season that would be like, Nico would come up to me and they'd be like, can you believe where we were and where we are now? Right. <laughs> I'd be like, no. Yeah. 2015, right? 2015, was that the start of it all? I think it something like that. It was 2014 or 2014. Oh yeah, seven years. That makes sense. Um, so I know. Speaking of Nico, I will forever be Team Josh. But I mean, who knows what will happen? I heard that you said the the finale is pretty uh, pretty fabulous. How without revealing anything? Because I know you can. I mean, what do you think fans are gonna think? I think uh, fans are going to really appreciate the ending of this series. It is wonderfully elegant and nuanced and it's kind of seamless. Um, it, it may or may not leave you with a broken heart. Oh my God. But I also think it will leave you with some joy and tenderness. And our show has always been earnest. It has such a good heart. And the finale, really, in my mind, the finale, first of all, fans are going to go crazy because the finale is almost an hour long. And they've yeah. been asking for that for seven years. But also, in my mind, the finale are like the final two episodes kind of serve as this, the, the you know, episode 11 is the, the gasoline that gets you into 12. So it is this like a thoroughfare of a story. And it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's, it's, it, it kind of, hurdles towards the finish line. I love that. And I know we got the first four episodes all right away. And then every week, I think on Thursday, Paramount Plus is dropping one throughout episode 12. So that'll take us into Pride Month. So I love that. Um, did you, you wrap, you uh, clearly, you wrapped last month, right? I think, what was we, that like? Yeah, February. Oh, February. So oh, I'm like, I don't even know what month it is. I'm like, I, I still think when I say Pride Month, I'm like, oh, that's like five months from now. I'm like, oh wait, no, it's like in two weeks. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm right there with you. I don't even, when I learned that today was Monday, I was like, what? It, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, what was that like to kind of, seven years is a long time to spend with these people that you see every single day for probably 16 hours and then you don't. So what was it like to kind of wrap up with them? And I hope you got to steal some fabulous clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I did steal some fabulous clothes. Yes. In fact, kind of like stole a lot this season. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, it's bittersweet. I think we're all excited about our own individual next chapters and um, we love each other so much and we're a family at this point. But I, and to that end, we were so sad that the last couple of weeks were really odd too because Hillary had a strict no-fly date because of her pregnancy. Oh, yeah. Nico had to go shoot The Walking Dead. So we lost Nico first, then Hillary fizzled out, then Debbie left. Um, and then it was like me, Sutton and Peter left on the last day and, um, Sutton was there. I tried to, I was there for when Debbie and Hillary wrapped and Sutton came in and surprised me and swooped, swooped in and gave me a big hug when they called series wrap on me. It was all very surreal. Like I had like an emotional blockage. I was feeling like I was going to explode in tears, but I, I couldn't like breathe because I was so freaked out that. It's just you don't you never think that a show is going to last seven years. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. 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 So I had no his, historical understanding for what 
even to expect on a seven year series wrap. I just, they luckily it was actually kind of quick and sweet. So I didn't have to like give a speech or anything, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was really hard. It was really hard to say goodbye to everyone. And it's just, it's something you never imagined doing. So it's kind of weird to experience. And then for you thinking back on the whole experience to get to have seven years with Sutton Foster, you know, it's like you love, like, you know, you're, that'd be like me, like spending seven years with Ricky Martin or something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, well, let's just put it out there. I, I know there's rumors and I would love a Lauren spinoff of some sort. Let's just put that into the universe. Cause I feel like there's more, there's more to that story, but also everyone do not forget May 21st, Milk Water, so great, starring this woman right here. Uh, it's a wonderful story about family. It's so uh, LGBTQ inclusive. It's so diverse. It's funny. It's touching. It's all of the things. So video on demand, May 21st. And remember, everyone, younger new episodes, Thursdays on Paramount+. Plus. The finale is coming. I have all my thoughts. Uh, Molly, you're the best. I can't wait to see you in person. Um, Thank you so much and uh, best to you and Hannah and I hope to see you soon. Yes, I can't wait.